You're listening to The Critical Thought, where we challenge our listeners to use critical thinking when examining the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. Hi, this is Daniel. Hi, this is JT. The purpose of this video is to talk to you about the responsibility of membership. Okay, JT, let's talk. On the previous video, the companion video, we talk about the liability of leadership. On this video, we talk about the responsibility of membership. JT, we've covered a massive amount of key issues, major topics over the last several years. Blood, 1914, Jesus is not your mediator. How come the Jehovah's Witness members don't double click on these issues? and do some fact-finding on their own instead of waiting on leadership. You know, you know, Daniel, that's, uh, that's a very good question. I mean, why don't they do that? And once again, I, I, I just, I cannot get away from this. Uh, that is why it's important for people to understand their teachings and their culture, because these two things run right beside each other. Why is it that a Jehovah's Witness doesn't say anything? I think the answer can be summed up because they see what the consequences are for doing so. Uh, as I mentioned, um, some people refer to people who want to see changes as a reformist Jehovah's Witness. They want to see reform take place. Well, let me just give you an example. Uh, I'm going to cite an example that Raymond Franz mentioned in his, in his publication, Crises of Conscience. And it really drives home the, the reason why Jehovah's Witnesses as members, as individuals, do little to nothing. In his book, Ray made the point that the governing body wanted to know, how are we doing? How are we doing? So they reached out to some of the most important Jehovah's Witness elders in the world. These men were local elders, city overseers, circuit overseers. They reached out to some of the what we would call their heavies in the organization. And they told them, be frank. Just tell us what you think and how we're doing. Now, of course, these elders, they all knew from just experience. You can't just say what you want to say in the organization. But it appears, though, the governing body says, look, y'all guys free to talk, man. Just, just, just say what's on your mind. What's weighing your heart down, brother? Just tell me. Tell, let us know. We want to know what we need to do. And that's what these men did. These men poured out their hearts. They explained what their concerns were about the friends and the pressures that the organization puts on people for this and that. They just, they just, they just shared with the governing body what they thought they needed to hear. Thinking to themselves, man, that was nice. The brothers were willing to listen to us and see what we thought and what we felt. And as Ray Franz mentioned in his book, man, the governing body came back with a vengeance at these same guys. And so what you see is that people are dealt with and they're dealt with swiftly. Mm -hmm. And so as other members in the congregation see what happens to anybody who raises his head up a little too high. And so as a result, the members, they simply just remain silent because they see what the punishment is. You know, it, 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 I, I remember uh, when I was in college, I took a class, um, and later see, we, we took this class. It was Black History, mm -hmm. and we had an excellent instructor. He was actually the archivist of African studies here in the state of Maryland. So he collected all the things involved in slavery and the plantation. I mean, this is what he did during his day job. At night, he taught in school, and he was making the point that people would think that you know, if I lived back in there, I wouldn't, I was, I wouldn't have been no slave. I, 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 I would have fought my way out. And then he explained to us the culture of how you would see how others were punished. You would see how others were just brutally beaten. And over a period of time, as a child growing up watching this, you would simply know, I can't say anything. And that's the way it is with Jehovah's Witnesses. Every Jehovah's Witness who is watching this video knows if they are caught on this video set, they're in trouble. And the culture of the organization is one in which people will turn people in. They will turn you in. Mothers, fathers. And so not only do some turn their families in, others tell them point blank, don't contact me again. 
I don't want to hear from you anymore. Done. I will have nothing to do with you. They will text them back. Don't, 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 don't take my number out of your phone now. And so these are the things that impact people being able to say something when they see something is wrong. This is a tremendous load that these people have to carry. They will lose their family and they know it. And that becomes the issue that people struggle with. Uh, what do I do? We, my wife and I, we have talked to, uh, it's, it's just so many people. But for example, in the last two weeks, we've talked to multiple people who they were turned in by their loved ones. And they didn't do anything extravagant. It wasn't like they was trying to, they simply sent them an article to read. Many times from the society's own publication. But when they sent it, it didn't have the right tone to it. It sounded like you questioned it. It don't sound like you just sharing this with me. It sounds like you actually questioning this. And that's what they did. They actually turned their mama in. They turned their daddy in. They turned, I mean, these people are actually turned in by their children, by their parents, for simply raising a question. And so this is what makes it so difficult for people to recognize that something is wrong and then try to take action. I can remember I told my sister-in-law that the uh, Watts Tower was trying to break up families. They break up families. And she said, no, they don't. I told her, just Google, Google it. She said, I'm not Googling anything. And now she's shutting it. And so what ends up happening, people realize this thing cannot be changed from within. If, I remember a brother told me, he, says, he, said, JC, he said, JT, think about a paper clip. If you take a paper clip and you unwind the paper clip, can you rewind it back? Nah, can't do it. Practically mm -hmm. impossible to, to fold it back to the way it was when it was manufactured. And that's the way this organization is. The major crack in my foundation was when I went to the district assembly and the brother giving the talks said, if you're happy with your life the way it is, stay off the internet. I wonder if everybody else understands what he's talking about. That's what I was thinking. What's wrong with being on the internet? <laughs> How's that going to make me not be happy? I had been gone on the internet for years. And I didn't see anything wrong with going on the internet. And uh, I can remember them telling us not to download the scriptures. And I thought there was nothing wrong with that. That, that made me stop and think, well, what, what could be wrong with that? It's, it's, it's a good thing be, to have the scriptures. Watch our study. Why are they so paranoid about us downloading the scriptures? I even had a had a program that I downloaded from the internet to fill out my time card. They didn't want you to do that. I used to surf the internet all the time. I even had a copy of the pictures of the governing body. Showed one of the elders. Look at, this is what they look like. This is what the governing body looks like. He said, I didn't even know what they, what they look like. So the internet was... Uh, it was common for me to be on there. I knew what they looked like. I'm surprised that he didn't know. When the society didn't have an online presence, they were telling us to stay off the internet. And if I fast forward to today, it's all about JW.org now. They're encouraging everybody to get a tablet and go on the internet. It's amazing. You start unwinding things, you can't put it back together and make it work anymore. And that's why people end up leaving because the parts that they unwind, they realize those parts are no longer the truth. And you can't put it back together and say, well, I'm just going to accept this part. And Once you start down that road of honestly using critical thinking and asking questions and accepting the answer, you just can't go back. That's the way it was for myself and every person I have talked to who has left. That's the way it was for them. You reach the point where you just can't keep making excuses. Wow. JT, 
you just made a great point about culture. In business, we say culture is eating strategy for breakfast. Like a company has a great strategy. If the culture is different from the strategy, culture is red, strategy is green, guess what happens? Red eats green for breakfast. And so it is with the Jehovah's Witnesses. You seem to be saying the culture is eating the truth for breakfast. The truth is green, the culture is red, it's based on fear and repercussions. And so folks don't double click on doctrine because they know what happens if they find out the truth about the truth. Does that sound about right? You know, Daniel, you know, Daniel, <laughs> that pretty much sums it up real nice, man. I mean, that really just puts it into the context of what a Jehovah's Witness goes through. That is literally the bottom line. So, so let me ask the question that we asked on the liability of leadership video. Though, JT, I think I know the answer. From the Jehovah's Witness membership standpoint, is it ignorance or is it arrogance? Once again, Dan, you know, you, you're throwing out some good questions. I, I think um, my mom put it best. I asked my mom, I said, if you knew the things about this organization before you became one of Jehovah's Witnesses, would you have become one? And she point blank looked at me and she said, no. No, I would have never become one of Jehovah's Witnesses if I had known what I know now. And I think that is really the key. The organization very skillfully, very skillfully, through the writings of its publication, keeps information away from people that they need in order to make decisions. Just one simple example. When we are studying the Bible with people as a Jehovah's Witness, there is no chapter in the publication that they will cover on their Bible study that deals with judicial meetings, how they take place, what takes place, what is done, how it's handled. The person has no idea. If you were to tell people, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be able to speak to anybody. First day you meet them, they will look at you and say, you know what, you can go and take, take this somewhere else. But what they do, they spoon feed you until you're, you're softened. And then you don't even ask about it. The average person who gets baptized doesn't ask much detail about judicial issues. Very, very rarely would you meet someone who's getting baptized who will be asking, well, brother, uh, tell me uh, what, what goes on? What, what happens? That doesn't happen. It just doesn't. And so you ask the question about ignorance or arrogance. I would say ignorance in the context of without knowledge. There's so much knowledge that a witness, when they're coming in, they simply are not aware. And once you get in, then you can't ask about it because then you're going to be treated or dealt with harshly. I mean, it's a perfect system. We get you in. It's almost like a switching. It's almost like a bait and switch. You know, you, you think you get one thing and you get another. And because you have family or something involved, or you may have a social setting, you don't want to lose your social structure, you just put up with it. And you just keep going. You just put up with it. And so this is part of the culture and the teaching that make Jehovah's Witnesses an interesting religion to start digging into and looking behind the curtain. Wow, JT. So you make the point that when it comes to the liability of leadership, it's arrogance. When it comes to the responsibility of membership, it's ignorance. You know, there's a saying that the devil is in the details. Well, I think the upgrade to that is the truth is in the detail. You think about a contract in business and the fine print. The devil ain't in the details. The truth is in the details. And I think it is equally true for the Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah is in the details. The truth is in the details. And if the Jehovah's Witnesses would just double click and get into some of that detail, they'll find out the truth about the truth. JT, let's bring it on home and talk about the how. So how can this continue? I mean, these are good people trying to do good things for Jehovah God, but yet this organization continues and continues. This reminds me of Nazi Germany, where the German people knew something was wrong. 
but they didn't do anything about what they knew because of culture and fear. They just kind of looked the other way. But history has made it clear that they were complicit, that complicity is the same as guilty. What are your thoughts on that? How does this thing keep going on and on? I think the way it, the reason it keeps going on and on is because in this organization, everybody is promised something. And so they've been promised that they're going to see their dead loved ones. They'll get their eyesight back. They'll get their health back. And the list goes on and on of all the things they were promised. And they are willing to hold on to that promise, whatever it may be, even though they see all this stuff going on around them. And so the desire to hold on, and we've seen that, and, and it's, it's very sad now for, for many of us like myself, who I'm watching uh, parents and friends of mine, their parents, they're reaching up into their golden years. They really almost feel they can't let go because I don't put 50 years into this program, I got to get paid. Mm. And so that's what makes it so difficult. That's what makes it so difficult when you approach family many times to share what you know and encourage them to do some digging, it's, it, it is such a high price that they know they're going to pay. But you are correct when you say the truth is in the details. And that is one of the reasons the organization does not want you doing too much digging. But here's the good news. Technology is a game changer. Because see, years ago, you couldn't find anything about Jehovah's Witness. You had to go to a library or you had to go to a Christian bookstore. You wouldn't have been seen coming out of a Christian bookstore to find Ray Francis' book for $1,000. But now, Jehovah's Witness is all around the world. Can quietly and secretly and in the comfort of their home, with two clicks, they can find out things about this organization they never knew. I think of all the female Jehovah's Witnesses who now can literally go up on the internet and read any body of elders' letter they almost want to read. Something that was unthinkable years ago. A sister would never go into her husband's elders' bag to read a letter from the Watchtower Bible and Tracks. Now you can click, get a PDF and download it, print it out, and lay it in the bed and read it. And so it's a game changer. The technology now makes it possible, and we see that. The largest number of people who visit our site, they're not subscribers because a witness can't subscribe to the site. Can you imagine being out in field service with your cell phone and all of a sudden it pops up, JT, release a new video. Oh, JT, oh, I don't know. I, just, I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came. They, they can't do it, but they are here. We will have active current Jehovah's Witnesses who will post on our site they're for people who've left the organization. Sometimes they're the first one out of the gate. I'm like, this guy, he already done read the thing and watched it, now he, now he posted. First one. And so the, the internet has made it a game changer. And so we, are, we think and we believe that with the internet now, especially with the newer generation, see the older generation, when the internet came out in the, in the, in the 80s, they scared a lot of older people off the internet. I mean, they scared a lot of witnesses off the internet. And so now the witnesses are starting to get more into the internet, but the young people, they have no fear of the internet. They Google anything, Google anything. And now a lot of young people, man, I mean, we, we see this just in our, just from our channel. A lot of young people, they are Googling Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower, and they're, and they're bringing back all kinds of stuff. And because the society, the Watchtower, has so much stuff that's documented, you can read it for yourself. You don't need nobody telling you anything. I can read this for myself and see exactly what they wrote. And that's the key. The key is, Looking at what they wrote. You don't have to accept somebody's opinion. I tell you all the time, don't accept what I say. Go do your own homework. Do your own digging. And then at that point, you'll be faced with what everybody who's left is faced with. What do I do? Do I keep on staying with this thing, knowing that it has no legs to stand on, or do I move on? And for those of us who have moved on, we have realized that there is life outside of Washington. There's life outside of Washington. And that is one of the things that I am so thankful for, is that now I get to see it for myself every day, every day. JT, great points. In summary, this video was about the responsibility of membership. The previous or the companion video was about the liability of leadership. We covered the why, the what, and the how. And I asked, why don't JWs double click on some of these key doctrines? 
And your answer essentially was fear and repercussions. You basically make the point that culture is eating truth for breakfast. Red eats green for breakfast. Fear eats homework for breakfast. And then we talk about, well, how can this keep going? And you seem to be making the point, fear, ignorance, culture, habits, and that the reality is too many folks got their lives riding on the lie versus pursuing the real truth about the truth. We said the devil ain't in the details. The truth is in the details. Jehovah is in the details. JT, any final ads and subtracts? What I would encourage anyone who's watching this video to do, if you know someone that you think would benefit from this, being able to just take a, a step back and ask a few questions, because there are a lot of people who are now reaching the point where they are open enough to take a second look, share it with them. Uh, we really encourage, we want to thank everybody for your support. Uh, my wife and Daniel, we've often talked about how we see the feedback and the feedback lets us know that people are taking seriously what their research has led them to. And there is nothing like freedom. And freedom from fear, nothing can compare. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. This is Daniel. This has been JT. And we will see you on the next video. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.